Are you flying back to the Philippines after a very long time or maybe this is your first time to travel to the Philippines and you would like to know more about the latest update regarding the online registration form that you have to complete before you fly to the beautiful country of the Philippines. Watch this video and find out more about the new online registration form called e arrival card that replaced the One Health Pack. Hi everyone and welcome to Jamie Aris Talk TV where we will talk about the latest e-arrival card that replaced the One Health Pass. I'll share to you the easy registration steps on how you can complete this online registration form just before your flight to the Philippines. My name is Jamie Iris and I am your talk TV show host. To all our subscribers, I simply want to say welcome back and if this is your first time to visit this channel, I would simply like to say welcome and i'm simply so glad that you are with us and looking forward that you'll be with us in the coming videos so i'm inviting you to subscribe to this channel click that subscribe button and that notification bell so what are you waiting for so now let me start and share to you what's the latest update regarding the E arrival card so recently a lot of requests had been given to the government to actually remove the one health pass the previous online registration form to enter the philippines and instead of removing it totally instead they replaced it with another online registration form now what are the changes from this form and what's the step-by-step -step process that you have to take into consideration when you complete this form on top of that we will also answer who needs to complete this form second when do you need to complete this form what are the documents that you have to complete and just like what i've mentioned the step-by-step -step process on how you will complete this form all of those we will be discussing from this video now let us start to answer the first question now who are required to complete this online registration form now when we talk about this e-arrival card everyone who will be traveling to the philippines whether through an airport or a seaport from an international travel or journey will have to complete this e-arrival card so it means from infant to the elderly you have to complete this form so parents and guardians you have to complete the form for the minors who will be traveling with you in this flight and of course for the rest even the elderly you do have to complete this form as well now the question is when i'll share to you the information about that once we start registering for the e-arrival card now the question is is this an application or a website the answer to that question is this is a website so you don't need to download any application at all all you simply have to do is access this website now the website as you will notice is the same as the previous website of the one half pass so that's www.onehalfpass.com.pa so yes that's still the same website that's www.onehealthpass.com.ph so let us take a look at the website and let's start the step-by-step -step process as i answer also some of the questions that we have mentioned earlier now welcome to the e-arrival card from the old onehealthpass.com uh, .ph. at this point in time this is still the website that you have to proceed when you actually complete the online registration form to enter the philippines however please keep yourself updated just in case of any changes in the coming days or coming weeks but for the meantime at the time that we're shooting this video this is the website for the new 
online registration form that replaced the one half pass at the now let us just take a look at the information that they have given us on the landing page of the e-arrival card number one in response to the iatf directive the one half pass is officially replaced with the electronic arrival card or what we call the e-arrival card now let's answer one of the questions that we have asked earlier now who needs to complete this online registration form and when so first one all travelers are encouraged to fill up the e-arrival card within 72 hours prior departure at the country of origin to avoid inconvenience upon arrival let's discuss this one by one number one who so just like what we've mentioned all travelers need to complete this so from infants to the elderly so once again parents please assist the minors now the second question is also answered with this second information now within 72 hours prior your departure at the country of your origin will be the time when you need to complete this e-arrival card now it doesn't mean that you have to complete this exactly 72 hours prior to your departure but within that time period however it is highly encouraged that you complete it at an earlier time to avoid any inconvenience upon arrival it's simply because sometimes because of so many people who's using the system uh there are times that you know we encounter technical difficulties and second because of the e-arrival card as well is a new online registration system so far with my own experience like several hours ago there were challenges in completing it that i was not able to complete it immediately until the last step that it took me like several hours again before i can actually complete it now hoping that this will not happen to you but then again it's very important to at least complete it not at not at the nick of time but at least give yourself an allowance just several hours or like few days before your departure from your port of origin now the third information please take note of this as well to avoid any uh, fraudulent website the registration for the e-arrival card is from the website that i had given to you that's www.onehalfpass.com.ph and this is free of charge and neither require nor collect any online payment. Beware of fake, fraudulent, or a scam websites and entities who requires payment from the travelers that happened with a previous online registration form. So looking forward that you will avoid such fake or scam websites. Number four, should you want to know more guidelines regarding international travelers? like foreign passport holders like yourself please click the blue link named here now today we will not be discussing or i will not be clicking that link because i will prepare a separate video for this it is quite a lengthy discussion but then again it's very helpful for you so that you will know exactly what are the travel protocols that apply to you once you enter the philippines and at the bottom you can also see open my profile so once you had completed your once you have completed your e-arrival registration you can actually click this and open your profile and then last print quarantine certificate so should you be printing your quarantine certificate you can just simply proceed to this link and of course now it's about time let us proceed to register just click this register button and then let us proceed now the e-arrival card actually had given us a very clear now this is one great feature of the e-arrival card so it gives us a clear explanation of where 
Now, this is one great feature of the e-arrival card. So you know immediately that you have to register on that you have to register using this button for foreign and national. So who are and who will fall into this category? Number one, to all foreign passport holder who are born in another country and was never a Filipino. And for former Fili uh, Filipinos who now hold a foreign passport and no longer holds a Philippine passport. So please click this link, foreign national. Now, once you are on this page, you can see there are four major steps in completing the e-arrival card. As long as there's no technical challenges when it comes to accessing this website, you can easily finish the e-arrival card in just few minutes. So the first step will be completing the data privacy and undertaking. Step number two will be the travel details. Step number three, the personal profile. And step number four, last but not the least, will be the health declaration. Now let us complete step number one. For the data privacy and undertaking, we have two major information. Now once you complete this registration form, you affirm and say that number one, all the information that you will be giving on this form must be true complete and accurate and you are fully aware that you can be held criminally liable for any misdeclaration or intentional omission made herein now this is in pursuant to the republic act number 11332 or the mandatory reporting of notifiable diseases and health events of public concern act number two now, the second information simply says that you are authorizing the Department of Health and the Bureau of Quarantine to collect and process the data or information that you had given on this form for the purpose of effecting control for the COVID-19 infection and for the advanced information arrival processes. And please, before you actually proceed to continue, you may also read the privacy notice now you simply have to click this blue link from this page and once you click it you will be given the full information about the data policy we will not i will not read it but you can read it on your own time and then you can see another link from this side or at the bottom please click the privacy notice here and you will see a longer version of this privacy notice. Now, once you read this, please go back to home. The only sad thing for uh, this part of the form is it has no return button so that, you know, you really can return from where we actually uh, were a while ago. So... But anyway, hoping it will change in the coming days. But for the meantime, just go back to home. Click again the register. Click foreign national. And then voila, we're back to the data privacy and undertaking step number one. So that now that you have read the privacy notice, you can now place a check or a tick mark inside this box that you have read and agreed to the data privacy and affidavit of undertaking above and of course let's now proceed to step number two please click continue step number two this is what we call the travel details i'm simply so glad that the process or the website is now responding faster than what we, it did earlier so let us complete step number two date of departure so please Ensure that, again, it must be within 72 hours before your flight. So, for example, today is October 18. So, you we can actually register within 72 hours before your flight. So, let us just say we will fly or you will fly on the 20th. And your arrival in the Philippines, let's just say, if you'll be flying from the USA or Canada, usually it takes like, two more days or it's plus two from the 
date of departure most of the time but not always some of you might be traveling from nearby countries and you can arrive on the same day of your departure date or maybe a day after but for this example let's just take a look now there is no error that you can see from the bottom of the page it means that the system accepted the information that you just entered now let's take a look the airport and seaport of arrival please just check what airport will you be arriving in the philippines and as you can see once you have chosen an airport of arrival more boxes are displayed please select the country that you'll be flying from let's just say united states of america and then here please choose are you traveling as a passenger or a crew of course as a passenger are you vaccinated for covid19 please answer yes or no You're the purpose of your visit now you can choose so again most of the time if you're not traveling for business purposes you can select other purposes why you are here in the philippines or while why you will be traveling to the philippines and most of the time it will be holiday pleasure or vacation now for former filipinos you can see also the other options that you can actually choose now you can indicate also the total number of intended stay in the philippines now the rules and regulations regarding that we'll discuss that once we have the video for arrival protocols but for the meantime let's just complete this form now please choose the airline name your flight number and then the seat bed or bed number now as you can see this is optional it does not have any red asterisk so you can actually leave it blank if you don't have yet your flight details or your you have not yet checked in online and then we're done with step number two let's now click continue to proceed to step number three Step number three, your personal profile. Enter your last name, your first name, middle name. So after you've entered your last name, first name, and middle name, if you have any suffix, please indicate that. And of course, your gender, date of birth. Your country of birth, your civil status, your nationality, your passport number, your email address. Please ensure that this is valid. It's active. Please make sure that it is active. You know the username and you know the password as well. Now for your contact number. It doesn't have to be a Philippine number. You can actually enter your number from your country of origin. And that's quite great. But if you have a Filipino or but if you have a roaming number for the Philippines, you may also use that. So let's just say it's your number, your contact number, your country of residence, your city of residence, your occupation, and educational attainment. And last but not the least, your destination upon arrival in the Philippines. So the question is, will you be staying in a residence or in a hotel? If you'll be staying in a residence, this is how it will look like. It will ask you for a street subdivision or what we call the porok. 
there is something like that in the Philippines. Just ask uh, your the people that you know so that at least you can have the complete address. Then enter the province and municipality or city. If you'll be staying in the hotel, you have to mention the name of the hotel, the resort or tourist destination, the province as well, municipality and city. For this example, for this example, we'll use the residence. Municipality. So we have completed the information required for this section. That completes step number three. Let us now proceed to step number four. Step number four with that will be the health declaration. So you simply have to enter the details of your primary vaccine. Okay, COVID-19 vaccine first dose. So name of vaccine. And then if you're vaccinated for the second dose, you have to also inform them of the second dose date. Vaccinated for the second dose, please answer yes or no. Vaccinated for the second dose, please give the details. The name of vaccine. And if you have a booster shot, please indicate it and give the information. And the name of the vaccine. Please remember, for all foreign nationals, it is mandatorily required for any foreign passport holder travelers who will be flying to the Philippines that you are vaccinated. At this point in time, anyone unvaccinated who are foreign passport holders are not yet allowed in the Philippines as per the travel uh, rules that we have or restrictions. Now, after completing all the details for the vaccination, now please indicate as well the countries you worked, visited, and transited in the last 30 days. Now, as you can see, it does not have any red asterisk, so you may actually skip this or may complete this. For this example, we will complete this. Now, history of exposure to known probable and or confirmed COVID-19 case 14 days before the onset of signs and symptoms if asymptomatic, 14 days before swabbing or specimen collection or any knowledge of being exposed to a person diagnosed with monkeypox. Now, the answer here is no. And then, have you been sick in the past 30 days? I hope not. So please, if not, then answer no. And that completes step number four, the health declaration. And once you're done, just simply click submit. And that completes your e-arrival registration. So with that, it's fast, it's easy, and you already have your e-arrival QR code. Please take immediately a screenshot because it's very important that you have a copy of this once you proceed to the airport now can you also print this yes you may do so but then again it's not really required as long as you have the screenshot of this e-arrival qr code then definitely that is what you will be using for boarding as you can see this is valid for boarding now there are a few reminders that we have here number one they mentioned let's take a look you must be mindful of your health and the people around you at all times. If you develop any of the mentioned signs and symptoms prior to your flight, consult your doctor. The third reminder says, if you develop any of the mentioned signs and symptoms during the flight, inform your flight crew. And number four, you must declare if you develop any of the mentioned signs and symptoms from the time of registration until your arrival in the Philippine airport to the quarantine medical officer. So let us just take a look at this e-arrival card. As you can see, this is valid for boarding and, it's and you are qualified for an express lane. Just in case uh, some of you 
might need a uh, manual validation for some of your documents, then you will see that uh, you will get a green, uh, like underneath a transaction number, you see now you're qualified for express lane. So uh, you can see a green, uh, I mean, letters. But once you see, for example, a message on your QR code that it's for manual validation, it simply means that you have to just simply show them the documents that they will be requiring from you, meaning the Bureau of Quarantine personnel. So that's it, everyone. You just simply had completed the new e-arrival card. That's it, everyone. You just completed the new e-arrival online registration form. And what is needed when you travel to the Philippines? So once again, everyone, please remember the following. Please complete this within 72 hours before your flight. Again, highly recommended you complete it as early as you can. Take a screenshot of the QR code for this e-arrival card. This is what you will need once you depart from the airport of your origin and once you arrive in the Philippines. And again, printing it is optional now. Now, any other reminder? Uh, so simply make sure... If you are required, if you don't have any booster, please ensure that you have your COVID-19 testing as well as uh, all the rest of the documents and they will simply check it in the airport and upon your arrival also in the Philippines. Although it was not required to be uploaded, uh, but then again, they need it. So that's one advantage of using the e-arrival card. So less uh, I mean, less time is consumed when it comes to completing it simply because you don't need to upload any other document. And all of you, regardless of the travel, uh, regardless of the vaccination status, whether with or without any booster, you all can complete it within 72 hours before your flight. Should you have some more questions or clarifications that you know wanted to ask regarding this new e arrival card please drop it in the comment box so that i can assist you uh, to answer some of those questions so with that once again my name is jamie iris your talk tv show host and if you find this video helpful and informative please click like and i'm inviting you to click that subscribe button and that notification bell so that i'll see you again in my other videos that will help update you and keep you informed and keep you informed regarding the travel protocols and guidelines in the philippines and other interesting videos so once again to all those who will be flying to the philippines have a pleasant flight stay safe and stay healthy may god bless you and thank you for watching See you again in my next video. See you everyone.